Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd. Habati fillah, advice was solicited as the pain of a mother is felt or was felt by one of our sisters. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ease her pain and make this advice something that will at least give her something, uh, some relief or some direction or something to ponder on if nothing else. And the issue is a common issue, unfortunately, we face around the world. Don't think this is something unique to the West. And don't think it's unique to non-Muslim countries. And that's one thing many people are fooled by. And the issue is, ahabatifillah, that a sister who has a daughter who's 20, in her 20s now, who was sent off to college, university, now long, no longer feels uh, a love for Islam, no longer feels anything for Islam, really. And the second aspect of that is that she has been dating a, non, a Christian uh, boy for... Uh, a Christian man for a couple of years and the mother is devastated. What kind of advice can we offer? First and foremost, Ahabit Tifillah, because this is a crisis that affects many Muslim families around the world and people fall into various categories with regards to this, meaning there are, for example, in America we have many immigrant communities who have customs and traditions in place, and they don't really relate with their youth. Their youth maybe were born and raised in America, for example, a first generation or second generation Pakistani family, or Indian family, or Beng Beng Bengali family, or Somali family, or whatever. But those are predominant communities that we have uh, in the West that have migrated, and a lot of them for economic migration, and did not consider what that migration and the impact that would have upon their children. And with that being the case, what happens in many of those scenarios is situations such as this. And the Prophet ﷺ said, كُلُّكُمْ رَاعٍ وَكُلُّكُمْ مَسْؤُولٌ عَنْ رَعِيَتِهِ All of you are uh, responsible and everyone is responsible for their flock. When we look at scenarios such as this, so first we have to look at the problem. And the problem often in a scenario such as this, first, young girls going off to university and alone, especially going off to university, not even in your home, but living outside of your home in another state, in another city, sometimes in another country, allowing them to study abroad. This is a uh, something that's happening here in Saudi Arabia, they allow their daughters now to go to America, Canada, and they're coming back washed out, and they're coming, and th what they're doing there uh, often is not always on istiqama to say the least. And so this is a big problem for changing a society and changing the custom and changing Islam. And with the mixing of all these ideas, we already know the results. All, many of us know countless uh, scenarios of sisters that are now lesbians and sisters that are now doing this and dating uh, and tabliking non-Muslim boys or whatever they're doing and obviously they are not feeling they do not feel that their needs are being met in Islam so what is upon those people who haven't reached this stage is that they need to really focus on the tarbi of the family that the men and the women, if they have a dual parent household, that they need to spend time raising their children. They need to spend time instilling the love in the hearts of their children for Islam, not just forcing their children. I recall once, sorry to get off track, but this is a big topic, uh, when I used to do some business and I had a small business in the mall many, many, many years ago. And I recall this was the first time it was a shock for me to meet some, uh, uh, you know, a Pakistani. And so a Pakistani woman, she came to me and she said, yeah, I used to be Muslim. And that just floored me because I had never heard of that. Now we know, unfortunately, especially in the UK, this seems to be kind of common 
place and they have communities of ex-Muslims as they call them and groups and social media accounts and everything else and and talk shows and whatever. And so this floored me. I said, what? How? How could you go from belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from Tawheed to disbelief? And she said, you know, my parents, I memorized the Quran. They forced me to memorize the Quran and blah, 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 blah. And I was forced and this and this and this. Basically, now I'm free. And she didn't even look happy, for one. And I said to her, that's because you didn't know Tawheed. That's because you didn't really know really truly Islam. Your parents forced you, you were forced, as I was forced to grow up in the church, and, and many of us were forced to go in our various religious backgrounds, and then we came to Islam. It's a similar tradition. So you have to instill the love for your children uh, Islam, uh, for Islam. Because this di dilemma that the sister faces now is now she has a grown woman who's 23 in the West. If you're in America, Canada, the UK, there's nothing you can do except supplicate to Allah Azza wa Jal and give her dawa. Give her dawa in a nice and subtle, gentle way. If she lives in your home, you have to also set the bounds. Don't think that's from love to accept munkar. She cannot have a, uh, any boyfriend coming to her house, knocking on the door and doing this, even if she's already way hit to death because you're aiding her in munkar. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa wa la ta ithmi wa udwan. Cooperate in righteousness, in, uh, uh, you know, in, in God-fearfulness, and do not cooperate in enmity and sin. So you do not want to cooperate in enmity and sin. And I want to use this time to talk about what is also a problem, especially in many Somali households, for various reasons that a lot of the communities, especially the immigrant communities, the women and so forth, there's a competition between them to uh, provide for their child, so their children, are, their children are spoiled to death. And they spoil their children even at an adult age. So then their children leave the dean, their children become criminal, the children smoke weed, the children uh, go to jail, the children rob the mother, and then the mother will still have open harms arms to them, oh Hoyle, we're going to provide for you, oh Hoyle, you know, don't worry, I'll still buy you a new car, I'll still buy you sneakers, yes, you can live in my house, Hoyle, till you're 40 years old, and still abuse me, and still not practice Islam, but, you know, at least you're in my home, this is a wrong mentality, and it comes from the crisis in our tarbiyah, so, as I mentioned, there's not much you can do but supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and give da'wah. And if they live in your home, if the daughter lives in your home or she's going to come back to your home, you cannot accept those munkar. you got to set rules because she's under your house. Because it will destroy you more. Even if you think that you can uh, observe and keep things, the lid on things, it will be even more of a crisis with you allowing that because she'll begin to accept that. Oh, I'm just going out with Tom. I'm going out with Dick to the, to the mall. Uh, we're going to the movies. I'm going to spend the night with him tonight. Can he spend the night tonight? These, these kind of things, you can't accept it. The heart hurts, and I feel for you, as we feel for so many of our youth that are being killed in the streets, that are being incarcerated. How many Muhammads do we have in jail now? And from every country you can imagine. And so we have a crisis with our youth, and it's very important to start at an early age, give them the love of Islam and the tarbiyah, and be for them. When they become older, a lot of times it's, it's really not much you can do except supplicate for them, except forgive, give them dawah, uh, you know, call them in the most subtle of ways. Yeah, you know, my son, my daughter, please come back to Allah. Don't learn the hard way. I don't want to see you in jail. I don't want to see you shot. I don't want to see you in a gang. Don't hang out with those individuals. Don't have a boyfriend. So this is very general advice. And we ask Allah the Almighty to make all of our affairs easy. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad. وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم